So this is, this is a new thing that came out about a month ago. And for those of you that are just joining right now, um, I was talking about clubs. Next year, we're going to have two different clubs. We're not going to have QESS anymore, but we're going to have a cell phone club for sewing, surging, and quilting. And then we're going to have an embroidery and IQ designer and digitizing, which will also have quilting in it because we quilt in the hoop. So quilting and all, all things embroidery and stuff like that. So yes, since that got turned on a little bit late. But I'm going to talk about this fabric tube turner thingy. So it comes with these, all these pieces. And you, you make these these tubes okay and so you know when they do those baskets and the rugs and all that sort of thing and it does it in one fell swoop so I'm going to show you how this works and I am going to put on and I should probably get my glasses out okay so I put on my edge joining foot because it has a bar and you know I love bars and I'm going to, <laughs> that came out really wrong. I love guys. I love guys. Okay, let's do that. Oh, and I'm going to move my, my needle over just a little bit. Okay. What's it called? Let me. This, this, is, this is called, you can go ahead and look at it. We have a couple of them out there. This is called the Fabric Tube Turner. And what you do, and I have, it comes okay. with this which of course we need to have. First of all, it took me a while to pop them apart because when you look at it, these two pieces are together and these two pieces are together. So I had to read this to figure out how to get them apart. So I'm going, there's gotta be a way to get them apart. So they come apart. And then what you do is, th this is meant for jelly rolls, okay? So it's set up for your two and a half inch wide. And I just grabbed some stuff that I already, this is a fusible kind, but you don't really need to use a fusible kind. So what you're going to do is you're gonna stick this through there and I'm going to just shove it through. Okay, so it's gonna go in here like this. So it's gonna go, get it, get it right in here. It's kind of all messed up. I kind of shoved it through. And then this goes in like this. Okay, okay, if you can see that. And it'll click in. It's supposed to click in. I'm hoping that this. So you have to have inter interfacing in it? No, this is a batting. You don't have to, oh, but oh. it's meant, okay, so that oh, okay, clicks in like it. this. See, so this is going to go out like this. Well, you can put something as thick as batting. You want it to yes. be squishy. Okay. You want to be squishy because when they make those those things, you oh, know. Yes. Okay. I put that in those, I have it hanging out there, and people are probably going, what in the world is this? Okay, so this mm -hmm. folds it one time, okay? So it folds it like this. So you have this going on like this. And because it has that, little holder part in there, it's holding everything in its place, okay? And then you go through the second part of it, oh, okay? Yeah. So then you have this one, so you, you put it through there, and it's gonna do that second fold for you. And let me get that one. So I'm looking at my picture there, and then this one goes in like this, like this. So now I have this, two pieces here. Now they have you doing this, which I thought was interesting. They, they show it doing this with you holding it like that, not really working for me. So I hold it on its side and then it just holds everything together for you and it actually works really well. So I'm going to just stick it under here and I move that over and I'm going to just start to sew. And I can move this along and move this along and it forces everybody to be and I do not want that to come up. No. No. And I obviously need to move my needle over a little bit more. There we go. So I can get that. And so it's nice is I just kind of pull it along and I don't have to worry about anything. And I just pull it and pull it. And it will and it automatically folds it for me. Mm. Yes, the bottom of the Does it fold know. it even? Yeah. Yes, it does. That's it does nice. fold it even. And it was, you don't have to worry about those. I was going to say, how much? I have enough to my left. I saw a later part. And you just keep doing that. As long as you get it in there, because it, it's holding it, it's clamping it in, it's just really, and maybe I'll just sew a little bit longer. 
from him because it's going to keep telling you that I'm running out of thread. How wide a piece can you put in there? It's just two, it's for the two and a half. They haven't come out with any wider ones at the moment. But here, go ahead and look at that and see how it holds it together. And we do have three of these, so you know if you want them, yeah, I'll take one. You can you can grab grab that yeah, one. You can okay. take this one. Well, he said they have three of them. Yeah, well, there's one more out there, and then there's also this one. So whatever oh, one's one, I can always order more. Okay. <laughs> so we we have that. So anyway, that is one of these new little gizzies. So you can make and I, and I just love how it just holds everything together yeah, and right. does that. And I can order more of them. That's just fine. But, um, <laughs> <I can't have laughs> my... <laughs> okay, so if you want some, I'll probably put an order in for more of them. It's one of those things. So, you know, it's been sitting up there for a few weeks, but unless you, you see it, it, you don't know what it is. And you're like, going, okay, this is great. And I had this, this rounded, kind of tied around it, but everybody's like, why so is she leaving weird things hanging around on the wall? So you know, this eliminates what? Having to fold it? And iron it yourself? It just, yes, because it holds everything together. It just, okay. because it's, you know, a lot of those ones you hold and then, then you have to press it as you go, or this one, because okay. it has that inside part, which I think is a really good idea. Okay. That inside part, it forces everything to be where you want it to be. And then, you know, you could just do, use that one part if you just want to fold it one, one time. But if you want to fold it that second time, then you go through that second folder and it also has that little thing in there to shove it in there. So you could use those separately or you could use them together. So it works really well. And you just keep sewing along and it just forces everything. But I did find though that when I was doing it, I liked it better on its side mm -hmm. than having to do this. And because once I do that, then I have to re get it organized again. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, that's, why are you holding it like that? Hold, if I hold it sideways, and then you can just push this along and it will just come right on out and you can sew it down. You know, anytime we have a guide, it, it really helps for just accuracy on things. So that's that little thing. And another thing, that because a lot of times we don't know this, this is a fusible adhesive. And so we have it over with the adhesive where the batting and stuff is over there. And um, so what you do is you can spray this. And I know that some of my, you know, some things maybe you don't, you need a fusible, but you don't have a fusible of it. Well, you can make a fusible. And this, this will go on to just about anything. So what you do though is you, you, know, you shake it up really well and then you just do a nice spray on it, you know, a nice even spray. And then they say, let it dry. And then you iron it. So it's not tacky or anything. So you put it on there and then you can iron it afterwards and they say 45 seconds and you move around it and so I tried that because um, the HTC stuff is I would say it's semi-permanent so it will come off so I tried it with I said okay I'm gonna spray it with this and so it's really gonna fuse and so because a lot of times you know after you fuse that fusible on and then when you wrinkle it up it kind of undoes itself and it, so I was doing, I'm being mean to it, you know, and I was being mean Did to it, work? it and I was opening it up and it's not coming off. So it, mm -hmm. I kind of double fused it. I know that one of these got a little bit stiff in one area. There's a little bit of stiffness here. So you got to make sure that you nice, even sprays go outside, <laughs> nice, even sprays. And then you can do that. But I was thinking about your stuff too, mm -hmm. because it is a permanent bond mm -hmm. after you iron it, but it's nice that you know, you can then, you can just spray all your pieces in it and you can move them around. And then once you get them where you want them to be, then you fuse it. And they have all their directions on, you know, the best way to fuse it. And this is a, this is a spray and bond. It's by Heat and Bond. And I do like Heat and Bond brand. I like their stuff. So we have a lot of that, but that will, um, you know, if you need some bonding stuff, you can do that. Okay. So now, today, okay, so over the course of the year, for those of you that have been coming all year, right, we started out with the serger, so you learned all kinds of serging techniques, and then we did quilting, and then we did embroidery, so guess what, guys, we got to put it all together now, because, you know, there's all these little camps, but you can bring it all together, Now you don't have, remember, you don't have to, but people are always asking about my jackets, so I'm going to say, okay, we're going to talk about doing jackets.
I have some simple jacket patterns in that, in that bin over there if you want to look at any of those jackets, but I'm going to show you some different jackets and things that I've done with them. So one, this jacket I did a long time ago, and this one, because it's unlined, it's weird. Ha these got sticky. Have you ever had that happen where somebody gets sticky? You know how to get the sticky off? I'm debating whether I need to take... On the fabric or on the button? No, the, these, these things, because they're kind of rubbery, and now they're sticky. Alcohol, I don't know. I know, I was thinking of trying that. Either I got to pop them off and put new grommets in. Anyway, so with this jacket, I did, because it's unlined, and I like my stuff to look good inside and out, I did felt seams. Okay, so these are flat felt seams. And I'm going to talk about how to do flat felt seams. I'm also going to do, you know, and there's also, um, I'll talk a little bit about doing your French seams too, because some of you may not know how to do your French seams. So there's the full blown flat felt seams. There's also, um, I'm going to talk about weld seams, and uh, there's also the mock flat felt seams. So this one, on the outside, it looks like it's a flat felt seam but it's not. I just surged it and then sewed it down because I wasn't going to fold this all this up, okay? So it's what I call my mock flat felt seam. You can do that. You can try that one. Um, then I also, on some, of, on some of my jackets, so on this one, because this one also is an unlined jacket, what I did is I did what they would call, a, you know, a Hong Kong finish, or mm. your, your cover. So I went and I covered all my seams, you know, with bias, with very thin bias. So, so are you doing that, let's say the, the bias, you're doing that after you've sewn it together? Yes, yes, and I'm gonna show you how to do that. And it's really not that hard, but you know, it makes for a really nice finish. Of yeah, I've always wanted to know how to do that. Mm. So we're gonna talk about that. And I did that on this one too, I did my, my finish on this also because I didn't want to, you know, on this one I, I did the seams together. I actually bound them together. At least I did them flat. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're not, you don't have to stick with tradition. You can do what, what works for you. So, sorry, I have another question. Oh, no. So, no. If, <clears throat> if you have a pattern, mm -hmm. and let's just say that the pattern calls for unfinished seams, they're just sewn it together, whatever. Uh huh. But you want to do the the, bow, the Hong Kong yeah, bound of that stuff. Uh -huh. Do you have to decide that beforehand and adjust because you're going to be, like if you're taking a French seam, you know, you're sewing and then turning around. Do you right. have to add anything in and this the one, No, you don't have to because you notice that I have my regular um, 5 8 inch seam and I just bound the edges. Okay, so I just bound them. This one is kind of a combination. So I did, you know, so I, I made kind of my mock flat felt seam because I surged it. But then this part that was on my, since it's a duster and this was gonna be open, I went and I bound the edges. So I did kind of both of them, you know, and I bound the edges on my, you know, on my facing piece too. So you can do things like that. Well, no one says that you, do some of these things. This one is very easy. This is all raw edge, which of course kind of drives me crazy. Um, you know, so I, I did, because I was showing people how to just do sewing, I actually used a three-step zigzag on the edge of this. I, you know, it, since this was a sewing class without a serger, I would, I would have surged them. But this is more raw edge. I did do kind of a, a raw edge flat felt, if that makes, I would call more of a weld seam. So I sew them down together like this, but it's raw edge. This is why I don't wear this jacket a whole lot because I'm not, but raw, you know, all this ripped up torn stuff is still kind of in. And of course I did my reverse applique raw edge. So it's supposed to be all ratty looking and everything. <laughs> but you know, so that, that's a sample. You can use, you know, you can quilt your jackets, you can use your serger, you can use your sashiko for those of you that have a sashiko machine. This one is done with a sashiko. What's a sashiko? The sashiko machine is a machine that it, on one side it looks like it's hand stitched, you know, the sashiko stitch, which is an up and down stitch. And on the back side though, it does kind of a, it's not really a chain stitch, but it looks like a straight stitch. So this one looks like it was all hand sewn. 
So what I did is I just had my big pieces of fabric and I used my sashiko. And this, once again, is raw edge. I just put pieces down um, and I just sewed them down onto a base fabric. And then after I sewed them all down, then I cut out my, my pieces and sewed them together. So this was done on the sashiko. And I did, because of the bulk and everything of it, all I did is I just searched the edges and sewed them. So you can do that. So this is a very simple jacket design. Also, because of everything that I was doing on it, I didn't want it to be too busy. So I have that one. Um, this one, because you can, so I have this jacket pattern. Don't ask me which one it is. It, it was from forever ago, but I made it totally reversible. Okay, so this jacket is totally reversible. So I put this, you know, for my waistband, put that in there. Um, I use big snaps because the snaps can go either way. So I can totally, you know, put it this direction. And now I have a completely you know reverse jacket so I can have either jacket like that and then I did put bling though you know because some of us have bling so some, you know you can put bling on there but you could do something like that and just make a jacket totally reversible you have to kind of think about it though when you're doing a reversible jacket you're going, oh how is this gonna work you know so I do have when I did do the hem I decided that I would have a little bit of the blue showing on my crazy side. And then of course, this jacket. And so this is quilted, you know, so a lot, this is all done on the serger. So I used all my different attachments. I used all kinds of stuff. You know, if you don't have a serger or a cover stitch machine, you could do embroidery, you can just do quilting, you do all kinds of stuff. And then after I did that, then I cut them out and then I sewed it together and I did line this jacket. And so this one is, is lined with just all kinds of crazy stuff going on it. So did you like have a big square that you did and then cut it out? Yes, yes, so I, would, so I would put the pattern piece down on the fabric okay. and give myself extra inches on both sides. What's the You learned one thing. What's the fusible adhesive? Oh, the fusible adhesive. Oh. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we're just going to have to go. We have, okay. We're in a bad situation at home. Okay. Well, it's good to see you for at least a little bit today. I'm glad to be here and just to get out. Thank you. So, Thank you. Um, and then also with this one, if you didn't notice, because it is a, okay, I'm going to be very British, zebra print. Um, you know, right, we pronounce it zebra. Where does the long E come from? I don't know. Anyway, but if you, if you didn't notice this is, I actually ha bought a white and a black zipper. Oh my God. And so then when I do this, I have a black and white zipper. So of course I have another black and white zipper. Right. So, but you, you know, so nobody says that you have to stick with one color. You can do this. These, these jeweled ones are kind of hard to zip up and down though. But I also like, this is a, um, this is one of my Vogue patterns. I think this is actually the same pattern as this one. It's an old Vogue pattern. I like their jacket patterns because they have all these different pieces. So they give you a nice shape. You know, so anyway, um, with those princess seams. So those are just some of the jackets um, I've done with different types of finishes because it all depends on what you want it to look like in the end, you know, and some are lined. So, you know, so I have two lined ones and the rest of them are unlined jackets because sometimes we just don't want it that bulky or we just don't want to be dealing with that. So we're going to talk about, um, oh, and I also want to talk about stabilizers. I mean, not stabilizers, interfacings. The because difference is, I love it. What is the difference? Is? Interfacings are something to stabilize a garment when you when you make it stabilizers stabilize fabric while you're doing embroidery on them okay, so good. they'll be taken off okay. okay so i got out my bin of stabilizers and went oh my God. i can tell i have this you know done a lot of sewing i mean i used to do tailoring and all kinds of crazy stuff actually i even got my book out secrets of, you know i reread it and I'm like oh my goodness so back in the day 
way back when, um, when I first started sewing, there was no such thing as fusible. Right, and that's why I hated sewing in high school. <laughs> Everything was <laughs> sewing. Yeah, you're right. You know, so you'd sew it in. Yeah. And so you'd cut it out, you'd sew it, um, you know, usually about, we always had the 5 8 inch seam allowance. So then you'd baste it in at about a quarter inch, you'd trim it, and especially trimming at the corners of some of your, and you can see the, this is fused on there, but I trimmed away the corners. And, you know, so you'd cut it away and you'd do all that. And the reason you'd cut it away is you don't want that stabilizer in the seam. You don't want all that bulk in the seam. Nowadays, we have the fusible. We have a tendency to cut it the same size and just fuse it on. A friend of mine, she called me, she goes, I'm having a lot of trouble with this one thing she's doing. And I said, did you trim your fusible stable or interfacing smaller and get it out of the corners? And she goes, they don't say that on the pattern. I said, of course they don't. Some do, but a lot of them don't. I said, because, you know, I'm going back to 1960, 1970s, even the 80s. And that's what we would do. So if I'm going to put a stabilizer, and there is stabilizer on here. If I'm going to do stabilizer on here, I'll cut out my pieces, and then I'll take my stabilizer piece, and I will trim it down. You mean your interface? I mean interface. Thank you. Okay. I got the stabilizer in my brain. Interfacing. Before you, before you fuse it on? Before I fuse it yeah. on. Yeah. I will trim it. So I'll go, of course, this is easy, because I just would. But the rest of them, I will go, and I will trim it away. And especially in the corners, because a lot of times I don't want all that bulk. If I'm going to turn a, you know, a, the yeah. corner of a collar or or a cuff, it's so it's so bulky anyway. To add that extra bulk in there is going to be can be a nightmare. So you want to make sure that you then cut it out smaller. Okay. And there's other there's a lot of different tricks too, because I know that one of the tricks that I that I would like to do on some of my inner on um, my, you know, when you have your, when you have your little front, front parts, um, sometimes what I'll do is I'll actually sew what I did on one of them. I actually sewed my fusible on with the right side onto the wrong side, and then you turn it over, and then you can fuse it down, and it will fuse onto the, the piece. So I'll fuse it along this side, and then fold it over, so you'll get get a nice seam on here. But then when you put the fusible against the wrong side now and then you fuse it down, then you get that really nice finished edge without having to do anything, mm. if that makes sense. Mm. So you sew it on, you fuse it. And then, of course, I'll cut it smaller on this side because I don't need it in this seam allowance. But this one, I do like it right on the edge. So you can do that. But so now how do we choose what kind of interfacing I'm going to keep looking at this interfacing yeah. <laughs> to use. So the first thing is, is you want to make sure that it is lighter than the fabric you're using it on. Okay? You always want to make sure it's lighter. And a lot of it is you, you get to know your brands. Because you could go and look at them and look at all the different things. And this is for collars and this is for cuffs and this is for this and this is for that. And you're like... Oh my goodness, I don't know what to use. You can also use fabric as your interfacing. A lot of times people will use silk organza as an interfacing. So you can use another piece of fabric as an interfacing if you need to. But there, you know, so you always want to make sure you choose the one that's lighter. Um, so there is sew-in and then there's fusible. And there's, this is, you know, for, for tailoring, this is my really stiff stuff that you, you know, you'd use in your jackets, you know, that really keeps everything nice and stiff. So I'm not going to use this on something lightweight. This is way too stiff, but it's going to be used in something wool, something that really needs to keep its shape. Now then, of course, we have our shape flex things. And these are wovens. And once again, that's a woven because we have wovens, we have knits, and then we have what they call non-wovens, which are just Non-wovens are nothing. I don't know what they're, they're non-woven. It's, yeah. So anyway, you have that. So you always want to make sure that you use, so with wovens, you can use wovens, and then there's knits. 
to be used with knits. You know, some are two-way stretch knits, some are one-way stretch knits. Um, if, you know, there's there's so many different kinds. So anyway, um, but I'm going to show you some of the weights. So this is kind of a this is this is a pretty heavy weight one. This is a non-woven. So if you need something that has and this pretty much has no stretch either direction. If you need something that's going to be really stable with no stretch in it, you're going to use something like that because your wovens are going to act just like your fabrics. You're going to have on grain is going to have no stretch. Cross grain is going to have a little bit of stretch. Bias is going to have a lot of stretch. Some things like on collars, sometimes that you wanted, could it add the bias so it will roll that collar better. So sometimes instead of putting it on there, really read the directions. Some pattern companies are better than others. They'll say, ooh, cut out your interfacing, you know, on the bias because you want that, that roll. So you have to really look at, at things. Some, some will just say, cut out your interfacing. But if you're doing like, let's just say all the way down your long coat, this is going to be a, the non-woven would be, you, you don't want it to Right, you could stretch. use the non-woven on that, or I would use a woven on this, you know, whichever one probably that I have, and just put it on there. And this is close, so, so I can even feel what's in here. And I, you know, and I usually put my interfacing on my facing pieces, not on my outside pieces. Because a lot of times, especially with the fusibles now, you get bubbles. Mm -hmm. Now, the bubbles come from shrinkage, okay? Not non-fusing. Most of them come from shrinkage. So either your fabric shrinks a little bit more, because even if you washed and dried your fabric, you know how cottons have a tendency and rayons? Every time you wash them, my husband would say, why do you hang all your clothes? I said, because they continue to shrink. And so, but your stabilizer, I mean, your interfacing might not. So all of a sudden, your fabric's shrinking and this isn't, so you're gonna get that bubbly look. Or maybe this is gonna shrink. So, I mean, some of them you can dip in water, hot water, let them, and lay them flat because you don't want the glue to come apart, right? Um, others, you can just steam them really good. So steam it above and then let it set and let it try and shrink up a bit. Have you ever shrunk, like sometimes my quilting fabrics, have you ever, like just put the iron to it and you can see it shrink up. You know, you spray it with water and then you put your iron on. You, I can see it shrinking up. I'm like, okay, let's get all the shrink out of that. Now let's get all the shrink out of this, press it and steam it, you know, get it all out. And then you can put it together and you're gonna have less problems because there is shrinkage. And so you can see that, so this is, you know, this is one of those old school sew-ins, visions of junior high, he's giving looks, junior high, right, you know, I'm doing that. And then there's some, this is another one that is just, you can see how open it is. It is a woven, but it's very open and it's soft on one side and it is fusible on the other. So this, this is usually what I would use in jackets and stuff, you know, so it's gonna to be totally enclosed, you won't see it. I have a lot of different, so this is another one that this, you, this is called a touch of gold, so it's a lightweight one but it is a semi-permanent bond. So I can fuse it on and will hold it during the sewing process, but it could come off in washing, you know, like if I wash and dry, and if I press it again, it will re-adhere. So it's one of those, so you, kind of, you really have to read the directions on some of these to know what, what's going on. Um, of course, these are, these are just some more. I just brought a bunch of them. Some are soft, some are stiff. So this is a lot stiffer. And you can see it looks a lot, you know, don't confuse your interfacing with your stabilizers, you know, because they are, they are made differently. But this is, I mean, so here's some of my knits. So this is one of my knits. This is another one of my knits. Very, very lightweight. This is another one. So it's kind of in between. So you really have to look and see what am I going to use? Make sure it's always lighter. Do a little test because sometimes this looks really nice and light, but once I fuse it on, it may make that fabric, it'll change the hand of the fabric. And you don't want that necessarily to change the hand of the fabric. So you want to make sure that it doesn't do anything bad. So, you know, I always have all my scraps and I test out my little pieces first. The Misty Fuse is, this stuff looks like, 
it's really lightweight stuff. So this is what, that misty shrink. So this is the misty fuse. Wow. So this is going to give you very, very little. It's just a little it's bit of stabilization. Strong. I've used it for like applique. The misty fuse. Misty fuse. I thought that was the you, stuff that Tucker took. No. No, no, no. This no, is not. Right. So this is a fusible you yeah. know, that you can that you can use when you want on both because it's right. It glues both. Yeah, so you can glue both and you can okay. do that. But I thought this was my my lightweight one. So no, this is this is the transfer one. But you can get all kinds of these different you know interfacings. So you know one, I think. If you're going to be on wovens, you can use non-wovens and wovens on your wovens, just knowing that the woven ones are going to act like your fabrics, okay? Your non-woven ones, sometimes I find that sometimes the non-woven ones, over time, they, they kind of rub away and stuff, so I think they're better if they're totally enclosed and not someplace that they're going to get rubbed on, but they also come in a lot of different kinds, from fusible to non-fusible, black and white and ivory and all kinds of stuff. And um, just know that, and also pull them and see, do they have stretch? So this one has a little bit of stretch that way, not a whole lot that way, but it does have a little bit of stretch to it. Um, and then you have your nibs. So just realizing that in some of these, if you have to dip them in water to get them to shrink, because that's one of my biggest pet peeves, is I'll go and I think I got everything shrunk up, and then everything looks great, it gets thrown in the washer, gets thrown in the dryer, I take it out, I'm like, ugh, and then I have to repress it, and hopefully it didn't shrink enough where you actually get real wrinkles. Those little bubbles, you can you can kind of work those, work those out. But, so we have those. Another thing I was gonna talk about is turning corners. Because there's a couple ways to turn corners. I know back in the day, they always used to talk about, you know, you sew your corner, you sew around like this, maybe you make, take one or two stitches, you know, at your corners, I'll put it down here so you can kind of see, and they'll tell you, okay, so you sew, you keep your needle in, you do a couple stitches here, you sew here, and then you're going to cut it like that, right? A lot of times they tell you that because you want to get rid of the bulk. So you want to cut it, and I usually will take smaller stitches here. I won't leave it at the two and a half. I'll take smaller stitches around that corner but you'll fold it and hopefully if you did it right, this will be about a 45 degree angle and then you can turn it, okay? And I'm gonna turn this one a couple ways. Now the other way that I like to turn sometimes is I'll take this, I'll fold this down and I'll fold this over and I didn't even trim, you notice I didn't trim. But this is where hemostats come in really handy. I'm gonna put that right up in that corner. Yeah. Right in that corner and then I'm gonna open this up of course, you know, this is, and then I'm, I'm going to pop it through like that, and I'm going to pull it out, and it's going to give me a really nice corner. My other one, um, they never quite turn quite right. You notice? I mean, they do. I'll, I'll do that one and get it up there, but you really have to work that out a little bit more, and I'm always concerned about poking too hard and poking yeah. through and doing all kinds of stuff. And then, so this one, I have, this is the one that I did not trim. And I have a really nice corner there. You can see my nice corner. And this one turned out pretty good too. I just have to, but I can feel, you know, I might have to go and trim one side a little bit more. But I, you know, you, I have it trimmed. But you can feel this one. You pass that around and look at that. Another way that you yeah. can do this, and sometimes, you know, sometimes you just, you have to trim. You know, especially on well, really how, tight corners. You're how close are you trimming? So you're trying to trim, if you have your corners here, you're trying to trim at a 45. 45. And how so close? when it folds together, right. they just butt up against. And I get pretty close. That's yeah. why I usually do smaller stitches. And then you have to be really careful that you don't mm -hmm. poke out yeah. that corner because a lot of times we're pushing it out. So the hemostats work well because they're kind of rounded. Mm -hmm. And there's also that point and press, that, <clears throat> that OESD point and press is nice because it's rounded, so it's a little ball it's that you really can nice. poke it through. Because a lot of times those point turners are too pointy. So you didn't mm -hmm. even trim it when you One of the sides I did not. 
One of the sides I did trim, just so you can see the difference, and the other side I did not, I just folded. Oh, now okay. here's another thing that you can do is, for this one what I did is I sewed one of the sides. I just sewed the, the one side. And then I pressed the seam allowance, I pressed it over. Okay, so it's holding it down. This is more of home decor, but this can work on your cuffs. And then, so now it's already pulled down. Mm -hmm. Now I can fold it like this. And I usually press it too. Once again, I get my hemostat right up into that corner. So when I turn it, I can <laughs> pop it through. And I'm gonna just pop it through like that and then let it go. It and it's gonna force it. Look at that nice corner mm -hmm. that it made. It made a really nice corner. And of course, your, your pieces will probably be bigger than this so you can get in there. And once again, I'll just stick it up in there, force this into that corner and pop it in. I don't know how I ever survived without hemostats, let me tell you. Where did you learn that? Or did you just do it? This, actually, this was um, from Nancy Zeman, um, mm -hmm. how to turn with the, uh, she actually uses her thumb. She'll put her thumb in there and she'd pop it through and then the hemostat works even better. This, this method of folding it down and sewing was a Pam Damore trick that I learned from one of her, oh. her things. I learned it from a Norwegian lady oh. who makes doll clothes patterns that I buy. And some of her patterns come with tutorials and that's nice. the first time. So when you have a, like the back of your doll dress, when you want to uh -huh. get that little corner. Yes. That's where she does it. Oh, nice, nice. And, and that's she's folding. So what is it? You're folding it over and sewing it in the fold? Well, yes. no, I'm just Look. doing the hemostat. She's just doing the hemostat. But yes, with this one, what I did oh, is I sewed the one side. Then I folded it down, I pressed it down, <laughs> and then I sewed the other side. Now this one, what I did is I sewed this one side. So I sewed, you know, like the long side. And then I actually pressed it open and pressed it each side. Okay, oh. just to, because sometimes when you fold that over, you get a roll. Mm -hmm. Now, if I'm doing a cup or a yeah. collar, I want the roll and I'm gonna make sure it rolls to the wrong side, mm -hmm. okay? But what if I don't want that roll? Mm -hmm. Because you're gonna roll, you, there's just no way around it, you know? So this way, I pressed it open and folded it. And then once again, I come up in here, grab it with my hemostat, and then just poke it through and so like, instead of grabbing both both edges of the mm -hmm. seam allowance you're just grabbing one right and i do have to go in sometimes i have to go in and say okay gotta straighten everybody out get mm -hmm. everybody in the right place you know the other way i find i don't have as many problems as this way sometimes i have to come in and kind of you know i can feel with my fingers yeah. and go okay let's look at that and get that nice and I'll do this on like pockets. And you know, if I if you want to do those patch pockets, because I can never get that corner really nice. So I don't trim on the pockets. You know, sometimes on cuffs I don't have to. Um, collars though, if you have a really pointy collar, you're gonna have to trim away something. You just can't get all that fabric in there. There's just too much fabric in there. But you can go and I didn't turn one side so you could look at it, you could pull it back outside. But those are just some of the things that you can do, you I'm know, for see. turning, turning yeah. corners like yeah, that. And it, yeah. okay, fine. I agree. It is just about out of breath. Don't well, you know we keep tip. going, right? That's we a just tip because I have therm uh, thermostats, um, <laughs> hemostats, <laughs> yes. but uh, I never use that, and I seem to stink at turning the corners. So. And I love my hemostats for just being able to grab. Like, like I said, you know, in a Nancy thing, she talked about holding it and then putting your finger in there, like your thumb in there, and then popping it over your finger, and that worked really well. But then, you know, when we st when I started using hemostats, I'm like, what's even better? What's even pointier is a hemostat. And I have a I have different sizes of them. You know, I I just I honestly don't know how to live without them. Like, how did I sew all those years without my hemostat? When you taught my first pair of the quilt shows last week. <laughs> Whenever it was, oh, I, I yeah down in Fredericksburg. Uh huh. I never had any. Oh my goodness! I, I felt like I needed to have them. Oh, and you were down in Fredericksburg. Yeah, you just, just use them to poke. But we grabbed, and you know, because I have some year. really big ones. 
And, um, you know, because we have hemostats out there up on the top. You know, we have a threadostat and we have a hemostat. They're a little bit different. Hemostats are grippy. Mm -hmm. And I have, because I do teddy bears, at least I used to do teddy bears. I need to start doing some again. Um, I have really big ones. I have huge ones mm. that I can reach in and grab and pull them out. And yeah, there was a place at the at the sewing expo out in Colorado. There was a guy that had like every size hemostat. And so I would go and I'd buy all the different sizes for all the different things that I need them for. And you know, maybe I only need it a couple times a year, but when I need it, boy, do I need it. But these are the ones that I use a lot. These are used a lot. And you know, being able to clamp them closed is mm -hmm. nice. And then you just squeeze them and pull them apart, you know. So I have my hemostats. I've had those for many years. I know that, you know, when I first got them and my brother-in-law who's a doctor was out visiting once and he was in my sewing area, he goes, Why do you have all this medical equipment? Because I have medical tweezers and I have these and stuff. And I said, It's the best stuff for sewing. I said, You guys have been hoarding it all these years. She said, We are now finding that you guys make the best stuff for, you know, sewing. Go to your dentist, you know, if they ever get rid of all their little scraper things right, for your teeth. Picks. Say, oh, can I can I if yeah, you're going to toss them, can I have them? They, don't like the, they won't give you too many because we've done that. They don't give you too many because they actually send them back. Right, a lot of times they'll send them back. But um, you mean like that's the great. The the yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, so we need buy them stuff. Oh. <laughs> sanitize. I'm not going to buy a dirty one. Oh, please. You're so funny. So anyway, so, you know, when I was talking about sewing, so on this one, you can see that I actually cut out. So if I sew down this way, I'm not going to have any of the interfacing in that corner because it's going to get too bulky. So I try and trim that away. But this is when I would sew like this and then I would sew down this way either by folding it over and sewing it down so I can get it that nice way or I could do it and fold them this way and sew it down that way. And it just holds everything in place so you get a nicer corner. And so that's all I'm going to do is just sew it down. And you can see that I trim this away. I trim this a half an inch. So when I sew my 5 8 inch seam allowance, I'm just catching a little bit of it in there. So it's just catching a little bit of it in there. But um, this is, oh, I grabbed the one that didn't have any of the interfacing in it. So this is the only side with the interfacing, but it'll grab it just a little bit enough that it's not bulking up your seam allowance. <coughs> Excuse me, but <coughs> I've had this cough forever, but it is going to hold it all down and keep it in your seam allowance. So you have that. <coughs> so are you recommending, like if you're using fusible, are you still trying to sew it in place or just use it? You, you still want it, what now? What? Oh, I have some water, thank you. Sorry. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> I still want it to be sewn down in mm. there to make sure it doesn't come undone through washings and mm. stuff. But I just don't want it all the way to the edge because you have all of that yeah. interface, you know, all that interfacing in there just adds one more layer of bulk. And you know, and a lot of times you, all you want it, you, the interfacing is simply to stabilize your fabric and to give it body. Sometimes it's simply stabilizing it where you're going to put buttonholes or something like that, or it's on the bias and you don't want it to stretch out over time. Other times it's, you know, you just, you need it there for different reasons. So um, always look at, look and see, you know, silk I think is probably one of the hardest things to, to use inter interfacing on and a lot of times I will use either a silk organza because it's lighter weight or you could use the same silk again because you also don't want to see through it you know you can't really stabilize chiffon you know mm -hmm. chiffon and georgettes are really difficult because you're going to see through it so those are those are tricky so I'm going to talk about different types of seams <clears throat> So I have different types of seams everywhere. Okay, those are, this is my hems and seams. Um, and, I, and you know, so the simple ones are just, you can just serge them. You know, for those of us sergers, we just, we just move on with that. This one was actually, this was for a class showing you how to use a sewing machine to sew on knits. And so one is a zigzag, one is a triple stitch, so it still has stretch. But you can do that, that's, that's pretty boring. Okay. 
So I have another one, just a serge seam because everybody wants to see those. Um, but I'm going to talk about a French seams because French seams are, you know, I think when I first heard the term French seam, it sounds so technical. Oh my goodness, it must be really difficult, a French seam, right? So this is a French seam on a type of chiffon, a crinkle chiffon. But, you know, I'm not going to fray, and it's going to be just a nice little seam. So with the French seam, you know, especially if your <coughs> seam allowances are 5 eighths inch, then it's really easy to do a French seam. What you're going to do is you've got to split your 5 eighths inch into two different parts. You're going to split it into three eighths and two eighths, right? Two eighths is a quarter. So your first seam, you're going to sew with wrong sides together. Okay. So this is the wrong side. This is the right side. I'm going to sew a three eighths inch seam, wrong sides together, and then I'm going to trim it away and make sure you have good scissors. Okay. So I have a good pair of scissors. Um, these are one of my favorite pairs. This is a ginger scissor and it's curved on one side. You see how it has that nice little curve? And I'm gonna tell you why I'm gonna use that in a little bit. But you know, the Kai scissors for this, the Kai's would be great too. But then what you're going to do is you're going to take that three eighths inch seam and I'm just gonna trim it down to an eighth of an inch, okay? So after you trim it down to an eighth of an inch, then you're gonna take your seam or your fabric and you're going to fold it right sides together Press it right along that seam. And then you're going to sew your quarter. I should, I'm thinking after this, I'm like, I should have done them all in black. Then you're going to sew a quarter inch seam all the way down. I have it open so you can actually see it. And you can see that the, you can see my cut edges here. And this is what it's going to look like on the outside. This is what it's going to look like on the inside. It's going to be beautiful. It's going to be finished. You know, and I know I know you use a lot of French seams on your doll clothes. Yeah, I have. It's, it, I mean, it's a big heirloom thing, too. It's a big heirloom, heirloom thing. Sewing. Yes, it is. So these are the steps, if you want to look at the steps of that. You can look at this, too. I should see. use French seams on my doll clothes. It, you know, doll clothes are kind of, it's a little bit harder <laughs> because heirloom. they're smaller. <laughs> they're you very know, small. So you have to sit there and go, okay, so maybe I'm going to cut my pattern out a little bit bigger because... You're not going to sew an eighth of an inch seam. You notice how I use the three eighths inch and I cut it to an eighth. You're not going to sew an eighth of an inch seam. You're just, you just can't. It's too small. So you want to sew it bigger and then just cut those up. Now I was going to talk about, um, that's my bound seams. I'm going to do a flat felt seam. Okay. That's a mock flat felt. Mock flat felt seams are probably, they're one of the easiest. So a flat felt seams are the seams that you see usually on your jeans. Now they have special machines that you just feed it in and they fold it and do all kinds of crazy stuff. So we have to do it a little bit differently to do our flat felt seams. So our flat felt seams look really good on the inside and the outside, okay? So this is my outside piece and this is my inside piece. Okay, and you can look at that. And so this is what I did on that one jacket. So the inside and the outside look really good. Yeah. Pass that around, okay? They're gonna look the same. So but the way, I haven't shown it yet. So here, right. here are my steps. And you can see, I, I write on these what they are. So when you're gonna do a flat felt seam, then I'm just going to be using a 5 8 inch seam allowance. And I have a felling foot. But you don't have to use a felling foot. You can use your, let me see, I'll talk about, oh, I have to actually take that, that out. I'll just show you that, or I, or I can use my edge joining foot because it has a guide on it, okay? So what you do with your flat felt seams is the first step, you're going to sew wrong sides together at your 5 8 inch seam allowance, okay? wrong sides together. And that's really hard. We got to, because we're so used to right sides together all the time, wrong sides together, because you're actually going to be folding to the top side. So you're going to do that. Then what you're going to do is one of the sides. And when I did my jacket, my denim jacket, I had to decide which direction do I want my seams to go. 
Here it is. So when I was looking at this, when I was doing my felled seams, I had to decide, do I want to fold it this way or do I want to fold it that way? So, I, so that will determine which seam I trim, which side of the seam I trim. This one I decided to go this way. Um, I actually did felt seams on, this was a pain, to, to do that, trying to figure out which way to fold it. And so you have to decide which way. The back seam, it didn't matter because it's straight, but the curved seams I went the other, you know, I, I went this way, so I folded it this way. So you have to decide which way you want to fold them. So, and that's the side that you're, that you are going to fold over is the side you're going to trim. And this is why I have scissors that are rounded. Because if I put this side up against my fabric, what are the chances I might nip into my fabric? Where this side, because it's curved, I can run that right alongside here and I'm not going to cut my fabrics. Okay, you know, my husband says, why do you have so many pairs of scissors? Huh. Guess what, honey? It's because of this. So I can get this up in here. I can run it along and I'm going to trim this to a little bit more than an eighth of an inch, you know, so I'm going to just trim that away. Okay, so I'm going to trim that away and then I'll have one long side and one shorter side. Then what I do is I pull this side over, my short side over, and then I put this side right up against that seam and you're going to fold it like that. Okay. And this is where a felling foot will come in because your felling foot is going to hold it. See how it has that little groove in there. You're going to stick it up in that little groove. If you want a bigger one, this will only do a certain size. So you're going to stick it up in there and it's going to, roll that fabric over so you're going to stick it up in there and this will run along the edge there and this will fold your fold your other edge can't get it in there today get it in there and then this you'll just go right along the edge a lot of times so that will just go like this and then you'll push it right along like that okay but sometimes i find that i can't get quite get it in there my fabric might be too thick or I, I want a different size than that's going to do it. So I will just fold it over like that and roll it over like this and then sew down this side with my edge joining foot, moving my needle over and then I can run right along the side. And here's what it looks like when I'm finished. You see how you can see how this is nice and folded over and I press it. This is a good place where you can use some of that glue basted stuff and things like mm. that to hold everything in place because sometimes pins are kind of hard to get in there. And if you use that glue basted and then you iron it, it dries right away and you know it's gonna wash out. But then I'll run right along that edge. So you have that first seam, this is your regular seam, and then you're gonna have your top stitching right along there. So those are, that's how you do your flat felt seam. It's not that difficult, you just have to think about it. And you know that you're gonna have extra steps because you're gonna to have to be sewing, trimming, folding, and sewing, okay? Do you, do you guys have, speaking of glue, do you guys have the glue pen yeah. out there? Yeah. Because at the, the uh, sewing expo that I just went to in Fredericksburg, every single vendor has the refills. And nobody has a pen. Yeah, because I try and keep, so if you look yeah. at the wall, I try and keep wow. everything all organized. So if you look at the big wall, the, all the glue yeah. sticky stuff, you know, I have the, the clips and the pins. Oh, I try to make it organized. And, and then yeah. below that is the glue. So well, I have glue pens. Really I have the glue basted that both oh, the little yeah. tiny tip one that you so squeeze and, and the bottle well, one. And I also have refills for the them. Yeah. And we do have the pens in there too. So you can do the glue pens. So we have all of those out there. Um, but yeah, so you, you know, that works well for that. But you're just gonna, so it's a two-step thing. It's one of those things, you know, there are days I just wanna get stuff done. 
And then sometimes I have to take a step back and say, you know what, I am going to take my time and I am going to do something really nice. And I'm going to use the felt seams. But you notice that in that jacket, the felt seams make the inside look really good. Okay. Everything is covered. I have no raw edges anywhere. Everything is nice and it looks good on the inside. It looks good on the outside. But we're kind of, you know, the flat felt seams are doing it kind of backwards. So, you know, you have to look at that. Now, if you don't want to go for the full blown flat felt seam. Thank you. What was that flat felt? Yeah, that was a flat felt seam. <clears throat> This is my whelp seam, so this is different. Okay, so my mock flat felt seam is gonna look good, but this is really easy, you know? The mock flat felt seam is I surge, I surge my seam on the inside, and then I press it to one side, and then I just sew down the edge. And so it looks like it from the outside, but the inside it surged. So this is on one a pair of pants that I did. So look at that, doesn't that look like my, it looks a lot like my, yeah. My, yeah. my felt seam. Look at the inside though. Ta-da! Okay, so I didn't have to trim or anything. I just sewed it like normal and then I just sewed down that side. So this is the mock flat felt seam. You may sit there going, yes, that's for me. And, yeah. and that's fine, you know, and that's fine. But you will see your stitching on the inside. Well, you can make it a nice color and exactly make it a now, could you explain that again? Because I was paying attention to oh, okay. all this stuff so, that was going around. Yeah, so let me let me just grab one of these. You mm -hmm. can just keep passing those around. So what I did for my mock flat felt seam okay. is I sewed seam. my seam normally, but I sur mm -hmm. I have a serger, so I'm going to use my serger. Mm -hmm. So I use my serger, okay. and then so what I did is I pressed this down, so the seam allowance to one out. side, yeah. and then on the top yeah. side, I yeah. just yeah. did a top yeah. stitching. Yeah. So if you look at it, yeah. on the outside, it's going to look just like that flat felt seam, but on the inside, you're going to see that I actually have a serge seam on there. Okay. So you're kind of sewing through the serge stitches or something. Exactly. Yeah. See, these yeah. are sewn down. Yeah. So I can't pull these up. So it's holding everything mm -hmm. nice and flat. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Why not? Done that before, not right? And not knowing what it was, right? You're just like, well, oh, okay, that looks good. So you have that. Now, a welt seam. A welt seam's a little bit different. Is that just for fake fabric? Well, no, this is just, it, it's all on how you want the inside to look. Okay. You know, since I have unlined jackets, I don't want threads coming off everywhere. Yeah. And sometimes I also don't want, if it's a jacket, I don't necessarily want serge seams because I might catch something in the the threads, like my rings, you know, you put your hands through and you get them caught in, in the threads and stuff like that. So you're gonna have less, you know, if I do even a mock flat felt, it's gonna be sewing those stitches down. So you're gonna have less of a problem with that. Now your welt seam is a little bit different. You're going to sew this right sides together so you're back, so we're back to normal world, right sides together. And then I'm going to trim one of the sides away again with my scissors. I'm going to trim one of the sides away. It just has to be a little bit smaller than the other one. And all I'm going to do this time though, is I'm only going to press this over since I'm going to trim that side away. When I press it over, it's going to cover that up and you're going to sew down it. Now you can. So it's raw edge. Yeah. Right, so you could, this one I used pinking shears on it because it was for a sewing class, but you could serge that also and do that. So it's not going to be as bulky, but it's going to give you a little bit different look, okay? So that's just called a welt seam. And sometimes they did welt seams, and a lot of times the welt seams were done in lined jackets. Like if you opened up some of the lined suit coats and stuff like that, they're gonna have welt seams in there to hold everything down, but they don't care because it's gonna have lining on it, okay? So I'm just giving you all kinds of, of stuff. Here's, here's a welt seam too. So that's another one. I just use pinking shears on those, but you could use, um, like I said, you know, this is for sewing for people that don't have other things. So when you're sewing the 
You know, you say you fold it over then sew. So the right. Are you sewing it from that back yeah, side that you're just, seeing, or are you sewing it from the front to make sure it looks I like usually straight sew it on the you're front just, so uh, my you just make sure it's straight. It's straight because if I'm sewing it from the back, if I didn't press it quite right, I may get wiggly. So I'm gonna. Sew, I usually sew it from the front. So I because that's the side that's gonna catch my eye. That's the side everybody's gonna see. Right. So I was thinking too. So I I usually do that. Okay. Yeah. So now we're just talking about how to finish seams. Let's say we don't want to do a flat felt seam or a mock flat felt seam or a welt seam. We just want to just do a seam and press it open and go on with it. Okay. So one thing you can do is you can just serge all those edges. Okay, and a lot of times if I'm going to have all my edges surge, I usually surge around my pattern pieces before I sew them together. I'll just yeah. go all around. That was my next question. Sew around them and then be done with them because it's kind of a pain to start doing it now. Exactly. So I'll go and surge around them to begin with. For those people that don't have sergers, you can use a three-step zigzag. Do not use a zigzag. Those big long stitches are going to get caught. So yeah. use a two or three-step zigzag, or this is one of those overcasting stitches. Now, for a baby lock, if you're going to use one of those overcasting stitches, you're going to use your G foot because it has a stitch finger in it. I think everybody here has a serger, right? So we're going to be zipping through like that going, yeah. you know, this, oh, that's nice. I'm glad I can do that, but I'm not going to. So, but if you don't, you can use one of those overcasting stitches and then you just, you know, so it's going to make your inside not fray. Okay. You know, that's the thing is I always disliked about making homemade stuff. You know, if I looked on the inside, it just screamed homemade because there were no sergers back in the day. <laughs> back when mastodons were on the planet, you know, we didn't have that. So that. another thing you could do is you could just use a pinking shear or I used um, a pinking rotary cutter and just did that. If you don't have that and you don't care, you can do that. But, um, or you can do your Hong Kong finish. And so I'm going to talk about doing a Hong Kong finishing. This is with a straight stitch and this is with a zigzag. If you're worried you're not going to catch both sides, you can use a zigzag to catch oh. it. Okay. So your Hong, your bound or your Hong Kong finish. The way you're going to do this is you're going to sew your regular old seam, right sides together, 5 eighths inch, just like normal. Okay. Then you're going to have some very, very fine on the bias and you know you could do this if you if the way it's going to sew together if you want to do this before you sew your seams you could do this before you sew your seams a lot of times I, I have to trim my seams or something so I don't do it until after the fact but you want something very lightweight so a silk organza or this is a lining fabric it's a very very lightweight fabric so it's not going to add bulk and I cut it on the true bias. This looks like it's about an inch. So you okay. made your own. I made my own. I'm not going to use that bulky, yucky polyester <laughs> stuff. It's too thick and, and I want something very thin. So, you know, if you're using silk, if your silk is very thin, you could use your, your silk to bind, bind your seams too, okay? So I have that. So then what I do is I, you know, and a lot of times I do this after the fact, then what I do using a quarter inch seam allowance. So even people that don't quilt, they need a quarter inch foot. Shocking, I know. Okay. <laughs> so I have a, so I sew it onto, so this is the right side. So I sew it kind of right sides together and I sew it like that. Then I press it. So you press it up. Notice this side, because it's on the bias, it's not going to fray. Okay. You sew it right sides together. Right, on, on the seam allowance. Onto the seam allowance. Oh, onto on the seam allowance. allowance. Oh. And then I press it away. And then what you do is you roll it over, roll it over that edge. So you're just going to roll it over the edge. And I'm going to press it. If you need to glue it, you can glue it, but pressing works just fine. You can see I only did part of it. And then what I'll do is from the right side, I will sew it down. And so you have to make sure that you catch, catch it the whole way, but I'll sew the stitch in the ditch. Okay. And that will then finish that seam. And then you will have a finished seam. Okay. And that's your bound. It's not that hard. 
I notice I didn't roll it over. I just rolled it over the one and it's flat on the other because I want to cover up my seam, but I don't want to add a whole lot of bulk. Yes, you do. And you notice I did it, you know, like on here, I did it here. Um, on this one, I just, you can see the back side of it. Yeah, and I just right. rolled it over it. Yeah. So, well, she's so now this that this whole time we're doing that, over. you're just sewing in the seam allowance. You're not sewing yeah. to the yeah. actual yeah. garment then. Yeah. No, I'm just, just not putting that over the edge of the Just thing. over the edge of this. And like yeah. I said, you know, so if like on this on one, because this was going to be straight on the back, I think I did this one before I sewed it together. Okay. I did that first because I could do that. And then you can go around, of course, I bound the edges of my, of my facing oh, pieces. Oh, okay. And so I bound those too, and I bound these. And so you can, this one, of course, I had to sew this together first, and then I bound all of that. So you have to think about it, about, you know, do I want to do it after I've sewn it together, or do I want to do it before? Sometimes you can do it before, and sometimes you can do it after. This one I actually did more of a binding. Yes. I bound the whole so thing because it was so, well, I didn't want it open. So I had to trim it all away because this is, this is not an inset sleeve. And so I had to trim it really close here so it would work. And so that's why I bound that whole seam, okay? This one, I did the binding after the fact so I did this, and I and I did this. Of course, you can do this before before you sew your that on there. But um, I went and I did this. I bound that, and I bound that after after the fact. Okay. So you have to think about it. If I'm going to do bound seams, when do I want to do it? Do I want to do it before? Do I want to do it after? Which is going to be easier? Oh, I'm going to have to trim that seam. I better do it after because I'm gonna have to clip into that seam, uh, you know, and stuff like that. So, but a lot of times the little straight lines, just do it beforehand. Just go in, just put it all on there. And then when you do your sewing, you just sew that seam and it's already done, okay? Would you do that on the outside of the jacket for decoration? Why not? I was thinking that, if you could. You could, if you wanted to do things all backwards and stuff, yeah, you know. <laughs> no, because because you, then you'd be sewing wrong sides together. Yeah. But the, yeah, you could do that. And you know, um, that's the thing, is we can do anything we want. You know, when we start doing this, and we can do anything we want. And I did do that. This, this jacket pattern was kind of strange because it just had you sew your zipper on and then it just kind of ended. I went, okay. I don't like this. <laughs> so I actually made this piece that I sewed down and I sewed it on there and I went and decided to sew it all the way up and along that whole piece because I'm going, I, I can't just have a zipper sewn on the outside of my jacket. It just was so unfinished. I couldn't, I could barely stand it. So I had to, um, you know, cover it up with this. So oh, okay. same, basically the same thing. Okay. I bound the edge of that zipper and sewed it all the way down because we can't. We have that ability and we can just do whatever we want. Yeah, can you imagine that? That zipper was just there. Yeah. That was that was very that's well, why I'm, I'm not Pretty. going to um tell you what jacket pattern that is and I won't sell it to you because <laughs> after so I did, what I'm did going, you, <gasps> what kind of material did you use to bind that? This kind of thing or to do that one? No, I just used the fabric that I had, so it's just a cotton. So that was that was done with cape, and if you've ever used cape fabric, cape fabric is lighter weight than your normal um, quilting cottons. It's a little bit lighter weight, so it, it worked out really well that I could do that and not add too much bulk to it. But um, yeah, yeah. So I know when I was looking at that, I just went, okay, this is not working for me. You know, some of us are a little bit too picky about that sort of thing. So anyway. Um, <clears throat> That's kind of it in a nutshell for all the different seam types, you know, that you can use to, to make a jacket or make pants or make whatever you want. You know, you can do whatever you want. But I wanted you to, um, you know, know about all these different seam types because you just sometimes we just, I don't want to have a line jacket, but I want the inside to look good because you're going to be able to see it. Um, the other foot too that I forgot to talk about <coughs> is this foot. 
think they call it the five eighths inch, I don't know, anyway, but I call it the adjustable seam foot. And this is nice because, you know, we have our quarter inch feet and our quarter inch marks and our five eighths inch marks and everything. But what, remember when I'm going, okay, you're going to sew this three eighths inch, right? I can, this is a really nice foot because it has all these different notches in it. And I can, and so what I can do is I can get out my seam gauge, measure, I know where the, the center, where my center is, and I can measure from there to there and get it. Ooh, I want half an inch. Oh, I want three eighths inch. Oh, I want whatever. Because how many times is, are you sewing with a different seam allowance than normal, and then you forget and go to sew something else? Foot? Yeah, you. Yeah. yeah, we have those. Oh, I yeah. love these feet. I do. If it doesn't have a count, I can't do. I know, and I like it, especially if I'm doing <laughs> half inch. Line. You know, because I can put it on my half inch, and then I know that whenever I go to sew, it's like, oh, I have to. That's my seam allowance. I don't have to remember that I changed my seam allowance from five eighths to something call else. An adjustable yeah, it's adjustable. It, I think you may have actually called the five eighths inch adjustable seam okay. foot or something. It's over on the wall, but we got those. So we have those. Those are two feet that I use a lot. You know, some feet get put back in their little case. Other feet get put in a, a magnetic bowl. These are in my magnetic bowl because I use them all the time. Oh, because anything with the guide, so I have that guide, so I can just move my my needle over and do whatever I want to do. Okay. So any questions? Because I know I went over a lot of crazy, oh, crazy sorry. stuff. <coughs> okay. I have a question on sure. tools or whatever for sewing on leather or faux leather. Mm. So. I know like a tough on foot, but that do you also put like a silicone thing around on the bed of the sewing machine? Or not Sometimes I use a really, really high tech thing called tissue paper. Okay. And you know, so uh, especially at Christmas time when you can buy it in bulk, mm -hmm. I will buy a lot of tissue paper. And then I will just, because it tears away so easily, mm -hmm. but it helps everything slide. Because when things start to stick, mm -hmm. then everything goes goes bad. So that's my, my easy way to do it. I use it a lot for like chiffons or something like that, that are gonna get pushed down inside there. You know, because sometimes I, I don't wanna use that single hole needle plate. I need to have that bigger hole in there but things can get shoved oh, down. Oh, so you're in. sewing through the tissue paper. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Uh, I just yeah. put it I just put it on the back. I'll cut strips of it you and I'll just it? stick it on the No, I just yeah, shove it underneath. Sure. And then and then I'll sew and I'll just keep adding it as the seam goes on. And then you just pull it apart because it's so lightweight. Yeah, it it's not mm -hmm. going to cause any distortion of those stitches. Mm -hmm. So I use that a lot for anything sticky or anything so lightweight that it might get jammed down inside. I'll just I always have tissue paper. It's down right there, you know, mm -hmm. and I'll pull it out and and put it on there. It's great to start too, you know. If you don't have your leader fabric, sometimes I will. Right. A lot of times, like the rolled hem foot, things get crammed down in there, but you have right. to start at the edge. So I'll start on tissue paper and then come forward and then let it come up on that. I use a lot of tissue paper and just to keep it, it's light enough yet it will keep all your fabric up on top and help help you get through things. So um, I was gonna talk a little bit about pockets. Everything was, I'm checking time to see about pockets because you know, we can, you can put pockets in things. So we can have pockets that, you know, are on the inside, you can have all kinds of pockets. So I was going to just talk about fun, silly pockets that you can make. Is, are pockets a common place to use that whelp seam? Um, <coughs> where are my pockets? On what? This, this guy has pockets. <laughs> yes, this one. Actually, on this one, what I did is I just surged it. But, um, you know, I don't know why I didn't cover it. Probably because it was just dark. But I could have you know, covered it just to make it look nicer. But yeah, you could use um, a weld seam if you wanted to, if you were gonna sew it down. I didn't sew it, I guess you sew it down here. It is sewn down on one part, but I have it just tacked in a couple places just to keep it there. But if you wanted to sew it down, you could do kind of a, a weld type of a seam just to cover up that extra piece there and do that. So, 
yeah, start thinking about, you know, all these different scene types going, well, where, where can I use this and where can I use that? We do have a lot of, there's so many different ways to do stuff. So, you know, pockets are always fun. This is actually my painting. But, I, ooh, I left, I just, I grabbed it. I left all my stuff in it still. All my painting stuff is in here. So, oh, and an extra exacto knife. Isn't that nice? So anyway, um, so here's some fun pockets that you can do. Because a lot of times, you know, we just do patch pockets and stuff like that. But why can't we, and this is, this is for my little paintbrush. Put my paintbrush in there. Um, but we don't have to always use just the same old, a lot of times we do rectangles. Well, why can't we do triangles and ovals and circles and whatever else you want to do to make all your different pockets. So these are, these are a type of what they would, not really a weld pocket, because well, the, uh, these don't have welts, but this is kind of how you would do a weld pocket. But the, I have all these different things in there. So, you know, if you're putting pockets on something, you don't have to follow any rules. You can go and change things up. I forgot how much, when I grabbed it, I said, oh, I think I just have my paintbrushes in there. A lot of stuff in there. So, did you paint the fabric? Yes, I did. This was oh, wow. this was a solar a sun thing. Yeah, I was just gonna say. Oh. That you did sun it's thing. hard to see find those anymore. I was trying to find my solar. I have solar threads. I can't find them anymore. Solar threads are really cool because I have solar threads that look white, and then when they're in the sun, they change to purple oh. and green and yellow and orange and all my different colors. Oh wow! So, but this was with yeah. I had the, my mm -hmm. girls were helping me. We just put whatever we found on there. So we have pockets. And, you know, because I know a lot of people like to do quilts and stuff, I said, well, why not do some other cute little pockets? This is, um, I haven't had, I just got this pattern this week, but this is called Pockets of Plenty. And they're patch pockets, but they do, a, but they kind of flip them over. I just like to get ideas. Like I said, I'm not really good at ideas, but I'm good at copying. Sure. I do have another book, of course. Why wouldn't I have a book on just pockets? <laughs> But I do, and they talk about, you know, having the well tight pockets, but then you can pipe them, you know, the flaps and everything and cutting things on the bias and just doing all these fun different ways to put pockets in your jackets and stuff. So you could put pockets here, pockets here, and doing them because they did this on the bias, of course, interfacing it so it doesn't get stretched out, but just to give it a different look and everything. So there's some ideas for pockets there because we usually do patch pockets and stuff like that now this is a purse i did oh that's pretty and it was one of these where i just went oh my goodness you know i had to re rewrite the directions again because of course um my way to put this in wasn't too bad but they actually have zipper pockets like this okay so this is just kind of a patch oh, wow. pocket here but this is a zipper pocket here so after I made the purse, you know, I wasn't thrilled with it, but I'm going, you know, I'm thinking I might change it up and rewrite the directions again and redo the pockets and stuff again. It was one of those things where you're just like, okay, who wrote this? But um, yeah, I put this in a different way, which I thought my way turned out a little bit easier. And I think it's kind of cute. When I first did it, I threw it aside, said, I hate this. You know, when you right after you've done doing something, you're going, I'm so done with it. But actually, it's not too bad. Now that I came back and looked at it, I said, it's not too bad. But anyway, so, you know, doing, <laughs> some, cute. doing, yeah, some, doing yeah. some fun pockets like that. Well, you know, when you when you struggle with something, you have to rewrite yeah. the directions, and you sit there going, I am just done. <laughs> and then you hate it. And then after a while, you're like, oh, it's not that bad. I can just do that. Um, another thing that I, I like to do is because I have... I used to do a lot of cute little things. So this, these were called frog pockets. So they used, so they made these cute little frogs and their mouths opened and there were pockets in there. Okay, so this is really cute for children's um, clothing or children's um, quilts and stuff like that. So of course you're going, okay, then I can do that too. So I made hippo pockets. So think about what to do, you know, so I made a hippo pocket, so here's, I even put a tongue in. So here's my hippo pocket. So you know, then you can sew it into a quilt. So you know, I have all my 
I did not digitize these. I should I should go back and digitize these. But um, so you know, I have my hippo pockets. So as I was trying to you know work work things out, so I made my hippo pockets. I don't have a sample. I don't know what happened to my. I made an alligator pocket, but I could must have put them on a quilt someplace. But you know, you can do the same thing with just a cute little body, and then you make your big head, and it flaps over the pocket. So I have alligator pockets and frog pockets and hippo pockets and. You know, you could do an elephant pocket or whatever you wanted to. Those do. hippo pockets would be cute to make, <laughs> of all things, like like a tooth fairy pillow. Oh, because it looks like it has its teeth. Because you it open has it up, but then you put your your put the tooth, tooth in there. In there. What a good yeah. idea! Yeah. yeah. So there. So you know, you can come up with all kinds of cute things. Like I said, I'm not real good at coming up with things on my own, but I'm going. If they can do a frog, I can do a hippo, right? <laughs> so. Um, but just doing some cute, because I know that yeah. some people are going, well, you know, I'm not going to do a jacket, but I like quilts. Well, then do a quilt with some cute little pockets on there and do that. So um, just just some, in, you know, just doing pockets and just knowing that the pockets, you know, when you're doing pockets, and I'm going to be doing some other classes later on and talking about different types of pockets and stuff, but... Um, you know, pockets can make and break stuff because we like pockets on bags and we like pockets on our, we all like pockets to put stuff in. We always need pockets someplace. So you can always add pockets to your jacket. You can add pockets to, you know, whatever. You don't have to have a hippo pocket, but, you know. But just to think of, just because this is basically just your regular, it's just a flapped welt pocket. But the welt is a hippo head instead of just a flap. So um, any questions on things? I know I went over a lot of stuff. I would like you guys to try a jacket if you would. You know, you don't have to. You know, I'm not making anybody. But, you know, we've gone over so many different techniques that, um, you know, you guys can do some really fun things now because you've learned a lot of different techniques with your sergers and with your embroidery machines and with your quilting and everything like that. You can do all kinds of really fun stuff with that because we need to bring it together because instead of keeping everybody in their own little corner, you only do that. You only do this. Make all your machines work together and just use all of your machines to get and do something really fun. Really fun. So questions on anything and then we'll do show and tell. <coughs> Allergies or <laughs> Okay, so any show and tell? Mm -hmm. Not today. Becky. Mm -hmm. Okay, come on up. I show, just made show my little bookmark. Mm -hmm. So <coughs> I've been distracted lately, so I haven't got a lot of stories, but I made <coughs> these um, leatherette. Anyway. Leatherette uh, bookmark, bookmarks. Took two pieces and cut the bookmark design. And you can fuse them together. <laughs> and I did use the um, whatever it is. The heat, and say, bond. the heat and bond. The heat and bond. It's, when you say le is it faux leather? It's or? faux leather. And what's on the back? Just just a different color. Oh, it is all leather. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I and I and I fuse them together, and then use my uh, silhouette to cut out different designs. And bought these little. Um, these are kind of nice. They come in a pack, and the silhouette cut this design out so that the hole was there. But you could just cut, you know, you could cut it square or whatever, or a heart shape, and hole punch something if you wanted. You know, put a grommet through or whatever. So anyway, these are like quick uh, Christmas gifts that don't don't cost a lot to mail. Oh, that's mm. a good point. Yeah, you know, it's a little yeah. thing, but something. That's good. So any other show and tell? <laughs> no, I'm working on, um, I'm doing a, I finally, I had bought the whole kit and everything to do. I don't do a lot of Kimbo Bell, but sometimes it's fun. So I'm making this cute, Which make one? yourself at home. Oh, quilt. okay. Uh huh. Ah. And mm -hmm. my good friend who was my sewing teacher back in New York, just moved uh -huh. so I decided when I finish it for as a wall hanging I'm going to send it to her as like a housewarming gift oh, nice. but I have made 
so many different mistakes and had to reorder, try to find the same uh. fabric and this came out a while ago right. because I don't right. get the things right away. Do any of us? So, it's only twenty. I only bought it twice. I bought so much and paid so many, many mailing fees to get another quarter yard or whatever. <laughs> Sometimes I had to buy a yard when I only wanted a little piece. Oh no! But just in case you make another mistake. But I wanted that. Particular fabric. They didn't because, allow for any extra yardage at all. You Nobody know, when you buy them. a fabric kit, it's pretty tight. Right. Close. If you if you need an eighteen by eighteen inch square, you're gonna get an eighteen yeah. by eighteen. And if you cut it, it sixteen by sixteen by mistake, you uh, are I'll never need it. <laughs> yes. So I know that you know because I have the software for that, but I'm use I use my own fabric yeah. for that. You know because I'm going yeah I'll just. Yeah. A better I it's a better idea to use your own, but you know, because I have so much scrap fabric, it's like I just gotta use my scrap fabric and I'll be fine. I just decided to, you know, just follow the whole thing step by right, step. Sometimes and it's been we fun. Do. Sometimes it's we do. Fun. We're just like we're just gonna follow it along and move and ahead. I, and, and I have a you know, I don't really care about it hanging it up in my house, but I thought, mm -hmm. oh, this is great. What it's is a perfect it? it Oh, it's cute. There's some squares you have a a couch, oh, but you put there's foam lamps. behind right. it, right? And then they have a lamp with the fringe, with the thing, and yeah. flowers on the window. So yes, yeah, so I'm trying to think what else I did. Vinyl. I had some chairs, oh and gosh. yeah, that's right. The vinyl on some of them. Oh, it's cute. It is cute. You know, there's uh, the digitizing is interesting on mm -hmm. some of them, but um, that's all I'll say. Yeah, but, but yeah. it's <laughs> but it, it's. Yeah, I mean, they do look really cute. You know, they do look really cute. So, and I know that they have their, like for this time of year, she has her Broomhilda's Bakery and there's yeah. some other haunted things yeah. that, you know, yeah. they always I suck never me finished in. the bench pillow yet. Oh, I have the, bench the pillow. pillow with the lights and everything. And oh, that's, that's right. I got that's halfway right. through that, so I got to finish that. But, so did anybody here get the information on Cindy Sims? estate sale kind of thing no I okay. did not so I can if I remember I can send it to you whatever but so Cindy Sims was in the ASG group right and she we taught in, here for a little bit, for a little before bit. She, she was a quilter and wrote yeah. a book whatever but she had apparently because <clears throat> they went to um, uh, a quilting organization to help go through her stuff literally over a ton of fabric they're gonna sell wow. it a pound um, by the pound, that's by how the pound. Pound. That happened to her. Lip, she died. Yeah, she she died. Her cancer came yeah. back. And, oh yeah. no! Yeah, and it's been um, a bit. She, I'm sure she has. Well, there's gonna be notions of it's so much that it's so. Who took it over was the new chapter of the Quilts of Valor Quilt Group or something. Oh, okay. And so it's gonna be like in the Winchester Mall. Like, it's a lot of fabric, I guess. Right. I mean, you know, she wrote books on right. oh, quilting yeah. and oh, everything. Yeah. She. she so, so she, she was has probably every worse tool. than me when it yeah. comes to I thought motion. I had fabric. I'm like a ton of fabric. For a long time. So oh. I'm sure she'll have quilting rulers and what, you know, I don't know what she has. I've never been in her sewing place or whatever, but it's enough that they're having it, I think, the October 28th and 9th <clears> that weekend, whatever, in Winchester. In Winchester. So Just in the mall? I can send you, Just... I, I'm sure it's at a place in the mall, but it's oh, big okay. enough that they went there to get some space I oh guess. Oh my goodness. When did this happen? Last year. This yes, year. She's, she, I know, I'm trying to. Because I was just talking to her here not that long ago. Yeah, I know. It seems long like time. not that long ago, huh? Yeah. She was one of us that, it was funny, there was a year at G Street where a lot of us got cancer at the same time. Mm -hmm. I fortunately did have, not have mine come back, but a lot of them came back and they died. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's been. It's rotten being this age, you know, mm -hmm. your friends are dying off. Oh, yeah, no you good. lose your friends. And mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, so that, yeah, I bet she, I bet she had every notion under the She sun. probably had, uh, you know, a lot of rulers or whatever. I'm, oh, I am i won't be able to go, but that that's the one thing I'd be like, hmm. So they're just selling mm -hmm. things out? They're selling right? everything. Right, yeah, because he doesn't need them. No. You know, I mean, that's probably what my husband would probably right. do. Oh, my like, husband oh, just threatens to bring in the dumpster. I said, no, we at least need to call burgers or something for the mission. Yeah, exactly. He's <laughs> doing Craigslist. Are you crazy? Okay. <laughs> so, anyway. Yeah, so that's, that's kind of it. And then 
Next month, I'll go over, I'm going to be going over zippers, like different types of ways to put in zippers, um, professional way to put in an invisible zipper, and some other things. I'll probably go over, you know, and um, whatever else. I, I so we can just pick, <coughs> we can just pick, we can just pick, we can just pick. <laughs> oh, I, I, I I like one on right, because like some of these, um, like this jacket, there's really not a whole lot of pieces to, you know, so you, you can just look at, this one has this piece and then a back piece, that's all it has, and then it doesn't even have a collar, it just says this, you know, so that's a really easy one. Um, this is, this is actually, I don't think this, this pattern, this is an indigo junction pattern, and it is super easy because it has a back piece and a front piece it has no like collar it has you know you just put it together and this is actually the same pattern as this one oh, really? oh. and because it's so i mean there's but the, i don't even this was an indigo junction one that we had in the store for a this long time same one? this is the exact same jacket oh, okay. but it doesn't necessarily okay. look like it because thank i used you, remember the name of it i uh, know it's just an indigo junction one but i think it's so old it may be a download only now, but oh, it's, uh, yeah, I I but it's a very simple. It's a eBay. very simple jacket because there's just okay, nothing that's to what it. I'm looking for. You know, that's why I like some of these, like the elements one. You know, it's once again, it's pretty straightforward, right? You have that piece yeah. and that piece, you know, and no stuff like that. Sleeves, so, no. oh, but yeah, that's a good point. And the great yeah. copy, you know, her patterns are are nice too. Uh, like that one. I actually made one. So this is all sizes in here, right? Probably, I think so. Are you selling like these? Oh yeah, these have been on sale forever. Like I made this jacket and I used the mock flap felt seams on it. And I made this and I wear it all the time. It's my like house coat, and it's a it's a cute one. And I just I use that all the time because it's simple. It has a hood. You don't have to put a hood on it. Um, How are the size? Oh, the different sizes. Oh, right. So they just they just so, yeah. so this is. So this is all the different sizes in here, and this okay. just tells you the yardage. Okay. Oh, so, hey, so, wait a minute. So, <laughs> yeah, because I mean, some of these are just, you know, there's jacket pants that, that when we had fashion fabric, you know, we had all the different yeah, that's the other patterns. Thing. So it's like, well, well yeah. fashion fabric, but I don't know if I have one. I realize that's some at home. So. But you know, you can use, because that's the thing is you can um, use quilting cottons on those. True. And what I did with, you know, with this one, because I went and quilted it, so here I'm using just fashion fabric, and right, then I, I, do have and then I quilted well. it. Oh yeah, and your Sasha coat. Oh I yeah, do that. so gorgeous. And so then I just have a piece of batting on the back of this, and I just quilted this that, and then I lined beautiful. it. So I didn't do, you know, so you can use quilting fabrics. And this, you know, I just cut strips and I just did the rolled edge on the edge of them and then I wove them together. This I used the binder, you know, that yeah. that um, folder. Right. Um, but yeah, the Sashiko, with this one, which was fun with this is, you know, Sashiko was a way for them to mend, um, mend their clothing. Mm. You know, so that's why I did what I did is I just, I had this piece of fabric and I just said, okay, and I took this, I literally tore this fabric up. It was um, you know, like probably a fat quarter bundle that I had of Moda fabric. And I just ripped it up and I just started placing them on top of these. And I just put them on top and put them on top. And then, and this is a good place to use some of the glue and stuff. Oh. And then I just sewed it. And then I cut it out. And this I did. So you didn't, you didn't sew it with um, batting underneath it, did you? Or you did? I don't think I did. Is it that? No, it doesn't feel like it. It doesn't feel like it. But you can see that, you know, I was trying different techniques. So I did the V's here and this is straight there. And then I just went at an angle. And I, when I started out, I was a lot closer together. And I went, I will never finish. <laughs> And so oh, I, yeah. I changed it, does it take up. Long. <laughs> it does, you know, because I'm just sewing and sewing and sewing and sewing. And so all I did was when I did it, I laid out my pattern piece and then added a couple inches along yeah. the side. And then I just put all my all this on top and then I just started sewing. You don't have to do this. You know, you could have just one piece of fabric and just True. do the Sasha coat. This is kind of cool. But this one I came up here too and I did the V 